Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to talk about some very important microservices interview questions. So I will explain everything in a very simple way so that you can recall these points in your interview without any confusion. So let's start with the first question. What are the disadvantages of microservices and what are the ways to address it? So the thing is microservices sounds very good on paper, but in real projects, they also bring some clear problems. One big disadvantage is complexity. So in monolith application, you deploy one application, but in microservices, you have to deal with many small services, each with its own code, its own configuration, its own deployment and its own logs. And because of this, the deployment becomes harder. You do not deploy one jar or one war file. You deploy many services. So you must make sure that all work together simultaneously for each release. And also testing is also very complex. You cannot just run one integration test and test all the services. You have to test each service and then test how they talk to each other. Then there is monitoring and troubleshooting. It also gets very difficult. If something goes wrong in production, you cannot just open one log file. You need to trace the flow across the multiple services and multiple logs files to find out the reason why it is failed. Now to handle these disadvantages, you do not run everything manually. In real projects, we use tools, some tools and practices like we use Kubernetes or another orchestrator to manage containers and services. So this helps us in deployment, scaling and restarting failed services. Then we use CI CD pipelines to automate build, test and deployment. So this reduces the human error and mistakes while releasing the application. And then we use a centralized logging system to monitor the application. We use monitoring tools for all the services. For example, one place to collect metrics and logs. So you can see the full flow of the application request end to end. So the simple point is microservices brings power and flexibility, but they also bring complexity. We handle that complexity using automation, orchestration and proper monitoring. So I hope this question is clear for you now. Now our next question is how would you call another service in the microservice architecture? This is a very important and very common like for beginner it is very common. In microservices services are separate. They need to talk to each other to complete a business flow. So there are two very common ways to that microservices can talk to each other. The first way is HTTP REST calls. So here one service calls another service over HTTP or HTTPS using the JSON. So for example, you have order service that can call a payment service through a REST API by sending a POST request with, with payment details in JSON. So in Java and Spring Boot, you might have used REST template, web client and OpenFang to make the, these type of calls. And the second way is messaging using queues or topics. Here services do asynchronous communication. So one service sends a message to a queue or topic using a message brokers like Kafka or RabbitMQ. And then other service reads that message from that queue or topic and processes them later. So this helps to decouple services and improve scalability because the sender does not wait for the, for the receiver to complete the work. In simple words, you can say if you need immediate response and direct call, you use HTTP REST. And if you want loose coupling, better scalability and you are okay with processing later, then you use messaging with a broker. So I hope this is clear now. And uh, also these type of questions and all other questions as well and explanation I have mentioned in my interview preparation kit. You can check that out. Link in the description below. And trust me guys, those who are buying this kit, it is very helpful. People who are not able to clear their interview rounds, now they are able to clear their interview rounds using this kit. Our third question is explain a few microservices design patterns that you are aware of. This is also a very important question and it is asked in many microservices interviews. So do not give a one liner answer here. Give like three, four design patterns or three, four patterns or one line for each with simple use case. The first one is API gateway pattern. In this pattern, we keep one gateway as a single entry point to all microservices. The client do not call services directly. They call the API gateway. The gateway then route the request to the correct service and it also handles cross cutting concerns like auth authentication, logging and rate limiting and sometimes response aggregations. Se second pattern we use is circuit breaker pattern. Here we protect our system from a failing or a slow service. So if a service keep failing, the circuit breaker opens and stops sending more call to it for some time. And this protects other services as well and avoid cascading failures. Of course, you can give a the default response and there are other mechanism as well to handle that to give the response. Now the third pattern we use is service discovery pattern. So in microservices, instances can scale up 
up or down ips can change there is no fix that this service have this ip or this service have this instance we create multiple instances we can have multiple ips as well and those ips can change in future as well so we use a service registry where service register themselves and other services do not use hard coded urls they ask the service registry to find the current location of that service this makes the scaling and dynamic routing possible so this is very important one the fourth one is most commonly used but it is good to know that that is database per microservice pattern so each microservice has its own database so this keeps the service loosely coupled because no other service directly touches its table and each service can choose the database type it needed so for example one service might choose mysql other service can choose mongodb and each microservice change its schema without impacting other service so this is not so important but good to know that and the fifth one is very important which is saga pattern so this is used for distributed transaction across multiple microservices so instead of one big transaction we have a sequence of local transactions in a different services connected by events so if one, one step fails we use compensating transaction to roll back what previous services did and keep con data consistent so for example there are multiple microservices and one microservice have db db operations and that microservice is calling another microservice that has its own db operations then there is a failure in second microservice so you have to roll back the db operation of this microservice and the first microservice as well so that's why we use saga design pattern for that so if you just remember and explain these patterns clearly even one line use cases it gives the interviewer a strong signal that you have actually worked on these patterns the next question we have is what is a circuit breaker and why it is implemented in a microservice architecture earlier we have mentioned the patterns using in microservices in which there was circuit breaker design pattern here we have to mention circuit breaker design pattern in detail so let us first understand the core idea so a circuit breaker is a mechanism that stops call to a service when it detects too many failures so it helps to prevent further failure on the service and giving it time to recover it is implemented in a microservice architecture to ensure that one failing service doesn't cause a complete system failure like a cascading failures this this will help us to maintain overall system stability and improve resilience by managing service dependencies better now let us break down the way you can say this in an interview so in microservices service depends on each other so if one service is slow or down and we keep calling it every request will keep waiting or failing so a circuit breaker sits around that call so when the number of failures crosses a threshold the circuit breaker opens that means once it is open it stops calling the service for the for some time and during that time it can redirectly return a error or a fallback response depending on your design after a cool down period it will allow a few test call and if if those succeeds it closes again and traffic goes back as normal so this protects three things it prevents the failing of the service from extra load it protect the calling service from long time out and it protects the overall system from cascading failure so in real spring boot projects we implement this using libraries like resilience 4j or built in support from spring cloud so the interviewer want to see that uh, you understand it is not just a pattern name it is a defensive layer around remote calls to keep the full system stable when one piece is unhealthy so i hope you got the idea now for more details you can check the description now, coming to our next question which is you are converting a monolithic application into microservices using spring boot describe the steps involved and the challenges you might face this is actually a very simple question so to convert a monolithic application into microservices using spring boot you need to follow certain steps first you need to identify the boundaries like business capabilities you need to break the application based on the business capability which should be smaller and manageable pieces then we create a separate spring boot project for each microservice for each module or for each business capability then we need to define the communication so we have to establish how services with communicate with each other like often we use rest apis but we can also use messaging like kafka or rabbit mq as well so here we face some challenges like there is a complexity in managing multiple services instead of one uh, service one service or one monolithic application the main problem is data consistency issue so each service manages its own database so you need to use some design pattern like saga design pattern to manage that and the troubleshooting between those microservices will be also difficult so we need to handle that as well so these are the outline but 
if you if i need to go through in details so our first step was to identify the boundaries to identify the business capabilities so how we do that so we look at the monolithic and break it into the smaller smaller business capabilities for example in your app whole application you have order service payment service inventory or user service something like that so each capability should become one microservice with its own code and own data ownership second step is to create a separate spring boot application or separate spring boot services so you create an independent spring boot projects for each microservice each has its own uh, build file configuration its own deployment pipeline and the third thing is we need to define the communication between those applications so we need to decide how services will talk each other so it can be a synchronous call using rest or it can be a synchronous call using kafka or rabbit mq so you need to also define like what api each service is exposed like who calls what after that we need to think about data so in microservices you move toward database per service instead of like one big shared schema so this means you have to refactor tables and queries and everything and uh, like like uh, we need to use the patterns like saga or to make uh, to maintain the data consistency so it comes with the uh, various challenges as well like first challenge could be uh, operational complexity like earlier you used to deploy only one war file now you have to manage many versions so the second challenge is of course we have discussed like data consistency because each service has its own database and you cannot use simple local transaction for cross services flow so the third challenge would be a network and debugging so now everything is over network and you will deal with latencies and timeouts and like partial failures of that particular application so we need to do the troubleshooting which required the good logging tracing monitoring everything so we need to use those tools as well so if you want to sound like strong in your interview always close with a small line like in short moving from monolith to uh, microservices is not just code split it is a full change of design data deployment everything so yeah that that was a small video about uh, microservices questions i hope this video it, in fact listening those to these kind of video will help you in your next interview and if you need more help or uh, more more content you can go to the description and you can grab your copy of the interview kit uh, thank you so much for watching this video